Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the Plapper. Platypus is the name, and today is our first Honkai Star Rail video. And I figured I would do kind of a, a quick little guide to three of the four-star characters that I think you guys should not overlook. They're the four-star characters that I've had a really, really good time with, and I think they seem very powerful. Um, and then at the end of the video, we'll even do a multi to kind of get this show rolling. So if you want to see more videos like this or just more Honkai videos, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. You know what's up. All right, all right, pull out your phone. So first, we're going to look at three characters that I think you guys should not skip on. And first and foremost, one of the ones I think is totally worth investing in is probably Herta. Herta is a character that I've really, really liked so far. So primary reason, if we take a look at her kit here, um, she has like an, a pretty decent basic attack, but really like we can kind of go over her whole kit. It's all pretty good, right? Like uh, an okay AOE that does not great damage, but when the enemies are at high HP, it actually does what I would say is decent damage, good damage comparatively to uh, some of the other things I've seen, right? As long as they're above 50%, this does an extra 20% damage, bringing it up to what 75%, which is pretty good. Um, the ultimate is also a, just a pretty decent damage AOE. 128% is definitely nothing to knock at. And then she even gets, um, but this is kind of the thing. You're starting with her skill. And then after enemies get below 50%, you kind of shift focuses. So the main reason I think she is worth it is actually because of her talent. Now her talent is a perfect, in my idea, quick farming technique for just farming stuff. When, when an ally's attack causes an enemy's HP to fall below 50%, she launches a follow-up attack. So every time you're fighting an enemy, it's time to twirl. You're going to hear that all the time. Anytime an enemy gets below 50% life for the first time in a fight, she's going to do an AOE attack hitting everybody. So the more enemies they are and the weaker they are, the stronger this gets. Now, this isn't very good against single target bosses, right? This isn't really going to be doing much for you, which is why, for me, she seems to be more of a farming style character to quickly get through fights that you are very strong for because she'll absolutely wipe the floor with it like in a turn, no problem. Because you don't, she doesn't even need to go first. She doesn't even need to get a turn. If you have one character hit AOE and it knocks everyone down to 50%, she'll come in and she'll knock the rest of them. Because if there's like four enemies, they all get knocked down to 50%, you're effectively gonna be doing more than her ultimate just in free damage to everybody before it even gets her turn. This takes priority over even using ultimates. Um, this gets priority over everything. The second they get to 50%, it'll trigger at the end of that attack. Now, her skill is kind of synergistic with this because it does more damage when they're above 50%. So kind of half her kit works above 50% HP with this being stronger. And then once they get below 50%, once you start getting some dupes, um, her normal attack goes to a 90% damage. Like it's a 50% and a 40% hit, which is two hits. It does double hit. So that's good for breaking weaknesses. And so that's why I kind of like her. She's, she's good at dealing decent damage to higher... HP enemies, but then once they get below, then you just kind of clean up fights very fast. It'll let you absolutely blow through fights, and I recommend it. Also, she has some just like really good versions of there's a lot of good abilities for her. A lot of these light cones that are good, right? Increase follow up attacks by 24%, and then if they're below 50%, like this is literally built for her, do another 24%. So this kind of makes her get triple the value out of her uh thing. But we're not really focusing on light cones here. So I think uh I think Herda is absolutely a top tier farming character now kind of in the same vein but a little bit different is uh i think everyone gets this character for free as well um kinky i don't know how to kinky i don't know how to say her name i'll be honest with you um but she's kind of got a really really cool slightly rng focused kit um but basically what she does is you just do normal attacks for 50 percent, or you could use her skill which doesn't do damage but it lets her every every time an ally goes this is actually the most important part when an ally turns start you draw a pile, you, you draw basically a card, right? And then once you get four of the same card, it transforms her attack into a really, really powerful uh, single target and AoE nuke attack. So basically what you're doing, every time an ally goes, she draws one. And then at the start of her turn, if she has four of the same, she will consume them all to unlock cherry on top instead of flower pick. Now her skill doesn't do an attack, but it also doesn't end her turn. You immediately draw two J tiles. So every time you do this, you have basically a chance. And if you could stockpile a lot of points, you could use this up to four times in a turn. You get increased damage and you're almost guaranteed to get a um, cherry on top, which is a very, very big hit. 
Um, but also beyond that, w when she gets the four, she gets a 39% increase to her attack. This will give her a 15% chance every time she uses it. But once you get all four, you can't use this anymore. And then you basically get this. So you're, you're kind of going all in on her basic attack, which is one of the reasons I think is really good. One, it's a powerful nuke. Her ultimate also is a good, powerful nuke that guarantees her next turn she unlocks this without having to do any investment, which is pretty good as well. You're going to do slightly less damage in terms of using the skill, 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 basic attack, but being able to ultimate and then cherry on top is very powerful as well, especially if her turn's about to come up. You could ultimate, hit everyone AoE, then hit everyone AoE again. Um, but the reason why I think this is exceptionally good is that this is all basic attack focus. So she actually, even though she does consume a lot of skills, uh, skill points, if you want to use this, she also will generate a lot because a lot of the times the best thing she's going to be doing is doing her basic attack. And there's a lot of things that like make basic attacks stronger that aren't necessarily that good. Um, let me take a look if I can see something here. It might have been mostly in the cones that I've seen, but there was like uh, increased basic, and you know, there's like increase in attack damage, but there was like increasing basic attack damage or something like that. There was a lot of synergies that I saw in light cones that can increase basic attack damage, which for the most part has been kind of weak, but specifically on this character, because it's such a large part of her kit and it's 120%. That's as strong as her ultimate. So it's just incredibly powerful um, and it's fun. So I just think there's a lot of, resources that you may not want to use on a lot of characters that go good on her so very fun character for me and it does seem very very good and finally i want to highlight maybe my favorite character so far asta now two main reasons here one asta's ultimate it just increases the speed of all allies increasing speed this is a speed based thing you can get multiple turns in a row it's not our turn based where it's like all right after um you know, like in some games, there's RPGs like there's turn one and your speed dictates your action order in that turn. But this doesn't have a turn per se. It's like it, it just is the whole battle. So if you had 10,000 speed, which isn't possible, but if you had 10,000 speed, you'd get like a bunch of turns in a row, you know. Um, so this makes all your allies potentially get be able to get multiple turns in a row, especially because you could time it to be exactly uh, when to go off exactly when you want. But also she's actually got like this really, really good. um like ability to aoe give everyone attack which is this is like okay um the the best thing about it is actually i think is her skill here this is a so <laughs> obviously your ultimate number one all right but besides her ultimate when someone's weak to fire and you're going up against single target bosses this thing hits really really hard at their toughness meter so she's a fucking beast at breaking fire weak bosses um, which has been very, very good. So on top of being able to just make other characters stronger by making them go fast, by giving them extra attack, in specific fights where you want fire weakness, she's actually like maybe one of the best in the game at single target boss fire toughness damage, which sounds, it is a little niche, but it comes up a lot. There's a lot of things with fire weakness. And when you get to the single bosses, you're going to be happy to have her on the team. Now her uh, normal attack kind of blows. Her technique isn't that good, but her ultimate her skill and her talent are really where it's at, especially her ultimate. Her ultimate is probably one of my favorite in the game. It looks incredible, and speed for all allies is just badass. You want to outspeed the enemy for the most part. Um, and those are going to be the three characters I recommend you don't overlook. We're not really going into builds that much and stuff yet because I still have to learn, you know, I still have to get more into the game about all that stuff. Like, yeah, I have light cones and I have relics, and I'm starting to specialize characters a little bit over time. But I still have a lot more time ahead of me before I really think I'm qualified to, you know, at least a couple more days before I'm uh, really able to go all in on the relic system and start farming and getting all the different sets and stuff. So that's going to be it there. Let's go ahead and do a warp here. We're going to do a butterfly on sword tip. 20 days left. We're going to do a 10. We got 1600 stellar jade. Let's see what we get here before we end today's video. Listen to the music. The music is the giveaway. Let's go! What do we get? One, two, three, four, five. Bo Bronya! Welcome to the party, Bronya. Six? Or was that six? Seven? I don't even remember. I lost count. We also got a perfect timing, which I don't know what it is because it's new. 
Let's take a look here. Quickly at this. Increases the wearer's effect resistance by 16%. Increases outgoing healing by an amount that's equal to 30% of effect resistance. Outgoing healing can be increased this way by up to 15%. That's actually pretty good. Being able to affect, uh, have an effect resist, preventing you from like getting frozen and stuff could be really, really, really powerful in specific fights. And then we did indeed get Bronya. She's, I, I've been doing her quest. I've been hanging out with her and her sister, and now she finally decided to show up. Welcome to the party. One copy deep. She's a harmony. Applies buffs. I actually didn't even know that. Awesome, but we're going to call it there. We're not going to go into her kit. That's going to be for a different video. Anyway, much love for Platypus is per Platypus. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I have to alt-tab out to stop my recording hotkey from break. Peace.